I've started going through some tax forms of different Catholic organizations and I found some interesting stuff. Now each nonprofit organization is required to file a 990 tax form for the United States. Not all of these organizations are required to publicize their 990 forms, which is why you don't find a lot of transparency in the Catholic Church among some of their organizations. But of the ones I could find, there is some interesting information. Today I'm going to look at the 990 tax filing for the Knights of Columbus for the tax year 2018. So in 2018, the total revenue for the Knights of Columbus was $11 million. And I think that revenue is generated mainly from member dues and the sales of their life insurance products. Now, I'm not a huge fan of life insurance, but I do want to say that a lot of the Knights of Columbus branches, their members do a lot of pro-life work. So I'm not attacking the organization for being completely corrupt, but I do want to point out some concerns that I have. On the 990 tax form, uh, each organization is required to list their highest paid employees. For the Knights of Columbus, they have Carl Anderson, who is the president. I think he's the Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. I think that's his title. His annual salary is $1,700,000. This amounts to almost 16% of the total revenue of the Knights of Columbus just for one person. Some of their officers, the vice president makes 477000 the secretary makes 395000 the treasurer makes 291000 One interesting person on their payroll was Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore. Now recall, Archbishop Laurie in an interview was joking about the Pachamama ceremony in the Vatican. So on the page where it lists the highest paid employees, it lists how many hours a week they work. And it says that Archbishop Lurie works about 10 hours for the Knights of Columbus per week. The salary paid to him by the Knights of Columbus in 2018 was $135,000. Based on a 10 hour work week, that is an average of $259 an hour. So I thought that was interesting to point out. Now I know the Knights of Columbus is always about recruiting, bringing in new people, and once they bring the people into the Knights of Columbus, once they initiate them into the organization, they try to get them to buy life insurance or whatever other kind of financial products they're trying to sell. And one of the reasons I think they're doing this is because they have a three million drop in revenue from 2017 to 2018. The Knights of Columbus, just until very recently, funded Crux Now as a Catholic media outlet. Their editor, John Allen, holds some heretical ideas. And Crux Now has also had journalists write articles for them who hold heretical ideas. The Knights of Columbus funded Crux Now when they were just starting up. It's interesting that the Knights of Columbus would even consider funding Crux Now as a startup, considering that John Allen used to work for the National Catholic Reporter, another heretical Catholic media organization. Now I just want to end by saying again that I think that the Knights of Columbus, they do some really good pro-life work in the community, but some of these things are very concerning, and I think these things need addressed, and if it's not brought to anyone's attention, then it's just going to continue to go on.